Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is David Botts. I'm going to show you all the new dynamic occlusion culling system I made for Born of the Wild Untamed. Now, as you can tell, if I go to the maximized scene view, it's all it's really sluggish and slow right now. That's because I got thousands upon thousands of items like these trees right here. And I still got to populate these areas right here where the pine straw is. But, um,. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And before I actually start showing the, the actual system, I'm going to explain to you why I had to create it. Oh, besides its obvious slowness. <laughs> but the biggest reason I had to create it is because if you notice the distance, the trees are popping in and disappearing. That is what you call level of detail, which we just call the LOD. Okay. Which I'm still keeping LODs, and I'll explain to you why. As you can see, this tree right here looks kind of bland. It's a dark with green. That is billboarding. All these trees right here are billboarded. That just helps you with details. So at a distance, you don't really need to see massive quantities of polygons and all that other good stuff. Okay. And that is the term, I believe, imposter. They call them imposters because they look like the actual item at a distance, but they're not. They're just a few polygons. Okay. Now, if I get closer and closer... You'll notice occasionally ignore the black flickering that's just in the scene view. If we get closer and closer to the tree, you notice it starts popping in more details. If I back up, it goes back to that bland color again. Popping in more details, and more, and more, until I get the absolute highest detailed model. So essentially, it has three different models. It has the high detailed, a lower detail, and another lower detail, and then a billboard. And then after that, it just completely shuts it off. But that's where the problem comes into play, being it has to individually shut off every single item at a distance like this. It has to keep track of all this stuff, and that's the problem, keeping track of thousands and tens of thousands of objects, if not hundreds of thousands, whenever I get everything set up the way I like. And that's where the problem comes into play with killing your frames. Okay, now dynamic occlusion culling. Normally with occlusion culling, you'd have to have a set world. And you'd have to bake the data. It would create these cubes all around the map. And it would pinpoint where your camera's looking at. And all kinds of other stuff like that. But in this case. Which I will probably do camera stuff soon. But the initial version of it. It creates just a grid of cubes. Across the entire map. You know like a checkerboard. Cube here. Cube here. Cube here. 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 That kind of thing. And it just works its way over to the other side. And essentially what it is doing is anything that intersects the volume of that cube, it's storing what's in there. And then it puts it to a dynamic array, which is pretty much um, like a grocery list. You, go to, you write down what you need to get for the day and, you know, you go get your stuff. So instead of dealing with individual objects, turning them on and off, I'm dealing with individual chunks of objects. So instead of, you know, all these trees right here being individual distance calculations. I can just do one chunk, like this whole area right here. And I can do another chunk right here, and right here, and right here. You know, just checking just the actual chunks instead of individual calculations. Okay. I have not yet made it cull the rocks yet, it's just trees and simply the bushes and stuff. So if I come back here, Make sure my player's controller is activated. Okay. Hit play. And the first thing I want to show you is my FPS. Because you're going to notice something. So I'm going to go ahead and point it out to you now. As soon as it loads. Just wait a minute. i got to do something. I accidentally did something. I forgot to turn it back off. Come back here. There we go. Turn that off. Okay, as you can see, that's a lot of rocks, too. It's a bunch of them. I don't have to deal with that, too. <laughs> now, if I go ahead and hit play. As soon as it's unloading. You'll notice immediately a lot of trees will disappear. Okay, a lot of trees just disappeared, and then a bunch of them just pop back into place. Well, let me go ahead and... Yeah, I have to worry about that right this minute. But yeah, now if you notice, I come here, 
select my player now real quick. You notice my frames immediately are a lot better, smooth, consistent. But that thing I wanted to show you, notice right here my frames are 33, which is not what I want. Now, if I just go ahead and maximize the view, they go back up. And the reason it's in the 40s right now is because i got to tweak the fog and all that because it's really expensive. But I want to show you the new system now so you can see how it works. Apologize about all the talking. I'm just trying to make sure everyone understands why I had to make it and why it's amazing. No, let's go this way. All right. If I move to player, you'll notice one thing. Look back here first. Trees will just pop into place. So essentially what it did, at the start of the whole world, all the trees that run here, it collected all the information about them and then it stored them into a dynamic array. So instead of dealing with each tree, let's deal with entire chunks of them. Okay. So if I come over here, bring you over here like this, quickly bring you over here, bam, trees are loading in over here, trees loading in over here, these trees are completely disabled now. So it's loading in only the information that it needs based on distance from, you know, the pieces of the chunks, the grid. You notice whenever I went down, it sort of made more stuff pop in. That's because it's using a, a pure line of sight distance check for now. Eventually I'm going to be using um, a bunch of, like, I guess you could say lasers. They're called raycasts. And I will be making them check distances like that soon. That way it's not just purely, you know, distance. That way it's um, based on where your camera is actually looking. So I can just, instead of rendering all this extra stuff behind me, I can just simply make it, hey, there's chunks in front of me, only render those. But this is just the first step of it. It's really efficient. It's performing really well right now. Player on over. And I know y'all kind of want to see what's going on in the game, so... I'll just go ahead and do a simple walk around so y'all get a good idea of it. Okay. So, frames are not bad. Just tweak items a little bit. Got my nice volumetric clouds, light, fog. You'll be able to see light shafts going through the trees like this right here. You see them barely. But, big reason, like I was saying, I think I told y'all this earlier at the start was like these empty patches right here where the pine straw's at. I, I, I don't like that. I need to fill these things in really thick full of bushes, you know, like ferns, like this fern right over here. I need to fill them in. And that's where the problem consists of. When you have thousands upon thousands of these, it really begins to bog down performance, no matter how much you pull things in the distance. So you have to use dynamic occlusion culling in order to give you efficient optimization to actually run everything. I know I'm talking a lot, I'm sorry. But yeah, I just want to give you all a walk around now. May as well. Y'all deserve it. Y'all haven't actually had a full video uh, video at all, actually. But as you can see, you can see the light shafts going through the trees. Really cool. Really gets a sense of depth to the world, I think. Got more volumetric lighting, light shafts. Look at look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna try to get to the top of the mountain so y'all can see the nice beautiful sunset. <laughs> Be a nice sunset view right here and just watch it for a minute. It's just amazing. I love this. It looks so beautiful. Yes, the clouds are actually moving and distorting shapes and all that. Oh, here we go. Our sunset's coming.
you notice how the light flickered like that. I got it um, since I made this a culling system. I can start adjusting things so I have more shadows. So the shadows is disabled from this area right here. So I'll cut it back on. That's part of the LOD, the model that's so close. That's the high detail model right here. The lower details right here. Look at that beautiful sunset. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So you see the trees pop into place right there. See, I gotta adjust things. It's not a bad thing though. Or another reason my frames are low, I completely forgot. I actually have a separate light for the moon, so they're both running at the same time. Look at that cloud, it's actually connecting with the other one, it looks like. But yeah, um, if y'all have any questions or if you'd like to comment on anything I've mentioned, please feel free to ask or mention it. And uh, again, y'all, I, I really appreciate everyone's support with me making this game. It really means a lot to me. And yeah, alrighty, y'all take care. Thank you.